that I'm normally broadcasting from. So a couple of things, if you are watching out there, please uh, drop some comments in there so we can see who's out there and, and uh, say hi. And also tell me if everything's okay. Is the audio okay? Um, is the video okay? Make sure all that's good because like I said, we are broadcasting from a, a very tough location to broadcast from. It's the kitchen. So we're always um, in this kitchen cooking something. I'll tell you, this is not a cooking show. Uh, and I'll tell you one reason, a main reason why. Actually, I'll tell you that in a little bit. I'll, I'll tell you why this is not a cooking show. But uh, we got some really cool stuff we're going to do tonight. So I talked about tot waffles a little bit. And you have to have tater tots in order to make tot waffles. And I'll tell you, I was at the store today. I got the last two bags. So I'm sure there was a run on tot waffles because everyone's going to run home tonight and make tot waffles. Actually, I'm just kidding. It wasn't. It's just because that's the way it is right now in our, in our life. Um, oh, my uh, waffle iron's ready. But it just seems that uh, in life uh, now, you go to the stores and there's just stuff out all the time. Uh, there was no paper towels today. I went to try and get paper towels. Uh, what you see back there is it. That's all we have left. And then eggs, we've got about a dozen eggs. I think we're going to be um, we're going to be okay for that for at least the next couple of days. But my son, who's working the camera, um, Jacob, thank you very much. Um, he is uh, really one that eats eggs. So we want to get into this because it's going to take a little bit to make a tot waffle. So I'm going to kind of tell you what I've got already out here. I've got my uh, my my waffle iron is hot and it's ready to go. I've already kind of pre uh, sprayed it with some cooking spray, but I'm going to do something which you don't have to do if you don't want to, but I'm gonna brush on some bacon fat from the bacon that I cooked. And uh, doing this is going to give the waffle uh, a little bit more bacon flavor, which is pretty amazing. Uh, you can kind of pretty much tell what you're doing, but if you guys really want a recipe, hey Danny, it uh, looks like we got one viewer out there, but uh, if you want the recipe, I'll post the recipe after we're done, and then you can kind of see what's going on with that. So tater tots, I've got them all ready. You want, you want your tater tots to be thawed, um, so don't put them on here frozen. So you want some thawed tater tots, and when you get your thawed tater tots, you're going to just start arranging them on the waffle iron. Be careful because the waffle iron is hot, and we just want to get uh, some some tater tots. Oh, you know, um, Mike and Beverly House are joining us from their uh, commune. Um, and he's the one calling me out on hoarding tater tots. But uh, actually, Michael and Beverly, I've got two teenagers. And I'm sure you guys all know what teenagers are like. They eat constantly, 24-7. And the fact that they're home now, uh, well, one of them's graduated high school, but the other one is homeschooled. And he's schooling himself, by the way, which is, is kind of cool. He's, he really actually does his own work. But they eat like five or six times a day. It's feeding time all day. And so I, I have to have at least another bag of these because what you're seeing right now on camera, um, if you kind of see what I'm doing here, I've got the, the tots almost arranged so we can squash them down here in a second. But this, this would last probably one of my uh, teen boys and this would be gone. So anyways, that's what it looks like. And again, all I've done so far is I have just put um, some spray on the, on the waffle iron. I've put some bacon fat on there. And now we're ready to squash the waffle. Uh, I put it on crispy. I don't know what kind of waffle iron you guys have, but um, ours has the settings where you can put from tender to crispy. I put it on crispy because I think a, a crispy tot a waffle is going to be better. Now, this is the trick, though. Squishing this thing down is quite the job because you want it to click in place without, and it's kind of tough when your hands are greasy. So I'm going to have to use this. There we go. All right. You can already smell the goodness of these baking. So while that's doing that, I've already started the uh, bourbon sauce here, and it's two tablespoons of. Uh, brown sugar and two tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the microwave real quick. Now I would recommend probably doing it on the stove, but in the essence of time, we're gonna just gonna put it in the microwave and let that go. 
So while that's cooking for a second, um, we're gonna show you what toppings we're gonna put on it. So I called this a loaded tot waffle. And the toppings that you can put on these are amazing because they're so versatile. I've seen people make grilled cheese sandwiches out of tot waffles. So basically the tot waffle on the bottom, put some cheese on there and then uh, the other tot waffle and then you just go ahead and um, you probably put it even on like on a panini board or something or panini uh, heater. All right, so I've melted my butter and sugar together for our bourbon sauce. I'm gonna let that cool for a second because uh, if I throw the bourbon in right now, it's just going to uh, evaporate. We can't have that. So anyways, while our waffle's cooking, I'm drinking my wine out of a ball jar because I do that often at home. But also for another reason, I'm kind of throwing a shout out to uh, Justin Boger and Eileen Boger because they were doing their cooking shows. I think it's Tuesdays and uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll have to see. But just go to bogerwine.com. Um, but uh, Eileen was cooking the other day. Uh, her and Justin were cooking some um, Albonica soup. And she mentioned that she drinks out of a ball jar. And I'm like, heck, I can drink out of a ball jar on camera too. So I am. So cheers, Eileen and, and Justin. And I'm drinking um, a lava cap. Zinfandel. It's actually one of the um, neighbors up there in Camino. So delicious Zinfandel. Look at this thing. It's steaming. It's it's awesome. We've got some uh, some uh, waffle cooking right now, and we're going to get into the toppings here in a second. So while I'm drinking, you guys should tell me what's in your glass. Uh, what are you drinking tonight? Is it wine? Is it bourbon? Is it beer? It's one of those nights where it's kind of cold outside, so I'm sure it's cozy, and you guys all got, got all kinds of cool stuff on. Hey, Debbie, uh, say some shout out to Debbie. Uh, Debbie and uh, Georgia are out there watching. Cheers, Deb. Georgia, it's good to see you guys on there. All right, so the toppings. I, like I said earlier, you can kind of see what I've got here. Um, there you go. I've got chives uh, right here, uh, bacon, and this is a... a nice thick bacon that I like. It's uh, got no nitrates, all that kind of stuff, because um, they say with asthma, you shouldn't be eating nitrates. Okay, there goes my spoon, so I'm gonna have to get another spoon here. But, um, and then just sour cream and cheese. So it's basically what you would put on top of a baked potato. Um, the only difference is that uh, we're gonna put a sweet on top of the savory. Ah, all right, got an extra spoon here. All right, the top waffle is almost done. All right, so back to why I am not gonna do cooking shows as, uh, as a regular thing, because uh, it's a pain in the butt for one thing. I should say it's a pain in the ass, it really is. Because you have to clean your kitchen. And it, again, if you've got boys in the house, the kitchen always looks like, I'm just gonna say it, it looks like shit. Our, our dishes are in there, piled up high. You can see my sink behind me, there's nothing in it right now because I would be embarrassed if you saw what it looked like about three hours ago. So like I said, they eat like four or five meals a day and then they bring their dishes down, they put them in there. And I know my, my son's behind the camera. He's just like, I can't believe you're outing me on national television. No, not national television anyways. Okay, so my sauce is a little bit uh, thick. So I think if I put a little, two tablespoons of uh, bourbon in there, oh, that was about two tablespoons then we're going to be able to kind of stir it around a little bit more. Oh yeah, look at that. It's starting to come together better. It's basically butter and bourbon sweetened. And it's hard to go wrong with that combination. So Stacy just joined us. Hey Stacy, hey, look at that, my cousin. Oh my God, I gotta put this down for a second because my cousin, uh, Eloy's on and he is, I. I just have to say, Eloy, good to see you, man. He's living down in LA uh, and cheers to you, cousin. It's good to see you, man. I love it when family can join. So it looks like Stacy's drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon. And since uh, since you're out there and about, tell me where you're from. So I know my cousin, he's in, he's in, uh, he's in Los Angeles, um, which is crazy down there right now. I've, saw, I've seen pictures of no traffic on the, on the, highways and stuff it's it's insane they do that up here too so tell us where you're watching from all right my bourbon sauce wow that's really good perfect okay so again toppings for the tot waffle uh what you don't see 
is after we're done with this tot waffle and I close off the program for the night, it's time to feed the family. And what I'm making to put on top of the tot waffles tonight is fried chicken. So chicken and waffles is a natural, but chicken and tot waffle is, is even better. So while this thing is almost ready, God, it smells good. Um, I've got to, I got to give you a little insight into the whole tot waffle thing. Look at that, done. I, I, I know my friends are out there watching and they're waiting for me to slip up and call it something else other than a tot waffle. They've been trying to get me to, to say a, uh, a particular word all week and I'm not falling for it. So anyways, they are tot waffles and these smell amazing. You get this like crust in the middle, which is uh, important to cut it up or break it before you actually get into this thing because otherwise your waffles are just gonna disintegrate. So I'm using scissors. You guys could use whatever you want. And this is hot, but we're just gonna get one on a plate here. All right, don't try this at home. Well, do try it at home, but don't burn yourself. All right, so there's one, and then you can always put it in the microwave if you want your cheese melted a little bit more. I'm good with it just the way it is. Uh, look at that. There's people already talking about how they um, had these for breakfast. Um, my son had one the other day with his um, egg on it, kind of pretty much the same way. We put some cheese, some uh, sour cream, and I like chives. I like onions and garlic and all that kind of stuff. So I'll put a little bit of extra chives. And of course, you can't ever have too much bacon. So uh, that's always good. Um, so this would be perfect the way it is right now if I just ate it like this uh, as a savory, nice little waffle. But I can't stop there because we have to have our bourbon sauce on there. So I'm going to go ahead and drizzle some on there. Just kind of back and forth. And what this does is it gives you a really nice um, savory and sweet taste to your waffle. And so there you go. I would serve this for dinner, uh, breakfast, you know, whatever. Um, I think the tot waffle is really versatile. You can use it for anything. Uh, and we talked about that. So if you've done this before, and Stacy, it looks like you had it. Uh, a tot waffle breakfast casserole. Oh no, tater tot breakfast casserole. Okay, so that's cheating. That's not actually a waffle. You guys are out there watching. Tell me what it is that you would put on top of a tot waffle while I enjoy a bite of this. I gotta get some whipped cream on there or whipped cream, sour cream. Although whipped cream, no, whipped cream wouldn't be good. All right, I gotta get this over here. I'm gonna make a mess. Come apart. They really stay together well for just being Tots, all right. Yep, it's delicious. <laughs> so it's crunchy. You get the the pork flavor from the bacon, um, giving it that nice savory along with the sour cream and chives. But then you get this unexpected, really cool sweetness from the bourbon and from the, um, the sugar in that bourbon sauce. <clears throat> And I think it's gonna go great with my Zinfandel. Someone just, uh, Allison, hey, Allison McQuaid. So Allison, where are you from? I think you're, you're uh, closer to the coast and she does some cool things <clears throat> um, with some picnics and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, I am, Evan Williams, I know. Evan Williams, I got turned on to when I lived in Virginia. And it's a great bourbon that I think a lot of people shy away from because it's on the bottom shelf. But if I had my choice between like Jim Beam and, and Evan, I'd take Evan. And of course, George Dickel for people that that know me from the East Coast. George Dickel is also one of my favorites. So anyways, that's it. That's a tot waffle. We made the tot waffle. Um, it's delicious. You saw how long it takes. Their show's only 20 minutes. And we we really got it done in a, in a quick one. Uh, joke. <laughs> Ghost peppers and salsa and avocado. That sounds delicious on this. I challenge you guys over the next week. To, to get your uh, waffle irons out and start making some tot waffles and um, see what you can put on them. 
so here's the reason, one of the reasons why I did this is not only is it a great food that I never knew about until this whole shelter in place came about and uh, someone shared it with me on Facebook that, you know, we should try this, but for a survival food, this thing is awesome. It's amazing. It's, it's cooling down now. It's going to be more solid. You could probably leave this on your counter for a couple of days and come back to it and eat it. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you could. So it's a great survival food. And once it hardens, then you can like throw it in your backpack and all that kind of stuff. And then you got potatoes that you can take with you wherever you're out on the trail. Um, so anyways, uh, some things coming up I want to really quickly mention and, and give a shout out to you. We've got some virtual tastings that Kilton Cork is doing um, with some of the wineries for the El Dorado Winery Association. And our first one is tomorrow with uh, Bumgarner Winery out of Camino. So we're going to be live. Uh, Brian's going to be in his winery. I'll be in my studio, not the kitchen. I'll tell you that because tomorrow this kitchen's going to look like crap. But I'll be in my studio. And we're going to go through three of their wines, which are outstanding. Now, that one's sold out. Uh, you can't get into that one now. It's sold out. But we also have Madronia. We are going to be doing a, a Madronia Vineyards virtual tasting on April 7th. And then we're also going to do a um, virtual tasting for Findleton on April 4th. Uh, we just signed on with uh, Crystal Basin. They're going to be doing one on April 9th. And there's going to be a couple more coming up. Uh, I think Bumgarner is going to do a whole series in, in April. So look for that if you're interested. All it is is you call the winery or uh, go online. Tell them you want to be a part of it. They'll ship you wines, and then they'll be ready for the tasting when we do it live on um, on a basically like a webinar. We do uh, Zoom, but uh, Zoom, by the way, is just awesome. If you're if you're not using it to talk to your family and, and drink, it's it's in my opinion, it's a little bit better than um, than the other platforms that are out there, just because you can kind of see everyone easier and stuff. It's kind of cool, but uh, so that's kind of what's going on with the virtual tastings, and I will tell you. Uh, River City Wine Week, uh, uh, we partnered with them to do some of our happy hours. So we're doing happy hours on Wednesday at 5 and happy hour on Friday at 5. So tomorrow at 5 o'clock, right here on Facebook, we're going to do happy hour. And our guest tomorrow is going to be Jeremy Marin from Existential Wine Guy. I was going to have Debbie say that, but uh, you can't hear her actually pronounce that. So it's ex <laughs> Existential Wine Guy. Um, he'll be on with uh, both Carrie and I tomorrow. Uh, and I'll just throw this out there. If you're if you're a musician and you want to uh, come into our broadcast tomorrow and, and do some music for us, it'd be kind of cool to have some live music on our Friday night happy hour. So think about that. Um, tell someone you know that, that can sit at home and play their acoustic and, and sing us a couple of songs. That'd be very cool. Um, anyways, what I was saying about River City Wine Week is they've got some great resources on there for places that are uh, delivering food, some wine things uh, where you can get some good wines. Um, and other events such as virtual tastings. Uh, all that information is on there. Um, soon it will be on my Kilt and Cork website, but we're under construction on that. So that one should be back up in another week. We are just doing some changing on it because as you guys know, Kilt and Cork is kind of changing and we've got a lot of events and things going on like that. So we're kind of changing it to fit that. But I really have enjoyed making this tot waffle with you guys. And while you're telling me where you're at and where you're from, um, and what you're drinking, I'm going to have another bite because it's, it's delicious. And I wish you guys could taste it and be here because you would love it. <clears throat> All right. So next week on Thursday, um, we'll be back again with our live. I'm going to try to keep doing live shows throughout this shelter in place <clears throat> at the very least. And we'll be bringing guests on occasionally. I've um, been doing some fun, fun things, but I can tell you this, we won't be making any more things in my kitchen. Again, uh, the next time we make something, it'll probably be a cocktail or whatever. Um, if you hear the doggies in the background, that's my dog. They're, they're uh, wanting to get loose and run around and cause havoc, but we can't have that while I'm uh, doing this in the kitchen. So that's what they're, uh, that's what they're all about. Well, that's about all I have for you tonight. A quick show, 20 minutes, um, telling you how to make a tot waffle. This is our tot waffle, all of our toppings. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it and what you prepare. But uh, it's a fun thing to do if for no other reason than you're just squashing a bunch of tater tots in a waffle iron, which is kind of therapeutic in its own right. But I want to see what you guys did. Comment on here over the next week um, what you guys did with your tot waffles and what uh, you've put in them. And also, please be sure to like um, my Facebook page, 
uh, Kilt and Cork. Also follow us on Instagram, um, Kilt and Cork. And if you like this broadcast and you like all the other stuff we're doing, please share so that other people can uh, join us and uh, give us a good, uh, good hello while they're out there in virtual land, shelter in place everywhere. All right. You guys, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Again, my name is Russ from Kilt and Cork. And until next week on Kilt and Cork Live, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow if you tune into happy hour. Be safe, stay inside, hang out with your family, uh, drink some good wine, make some good food, but more importantly, just stay, just, just stay safe and uh, don't go outside right now. All right, cheers. We'll see you next week. <laughs>